Hey guys, Dr. J here, and in this video we're going to talk about aeronautical decision making. And um, this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of topic than what we've talked about so far, but it's going to be related to pilot safety, um, how to make good decisions under bad circumstances, and there's going to be several questions on this topic on the Part 107 exam. This topic was developed over a number of decades, actually, really for manned aircraft pilots and how to make good decisions. But a lot of the material actually applies really well to UAV piloting. A lot of times what happens in the moment, something goes wrong, we just sort of freeze up. And I've had this happen to me before where maybe I'm flying and my drone starts to crash and I just sort of freeze up, can't really think about too much in the moment. And so the, this process that we're going to talk about, aeronautical decision making, is actually several different processes is going to help you sort of think through steps before you fly for making good decisions. There's going to be a number of different topics and processes that we'll talk about. Um, Decision-making process. How do you make good decisions? Uh, are we going to fly? Or are we not going to fly? Thinking about hazard and risk. So what are hazardous conditions and attitudes to avoid? And how do we assess and manage risk? All flights are associated with some degree of risk. Um, and so we need to manage that risk appropriately. 80% of all aviation accidents are related to human errors. And the statistics for UAV flying is not out really, but it's probably going to be similar for drones. And many of these are going to occur during, you know, kind of predictable conditions. During takeoff and landing is the biggest time uh, when we might have accidents. All right, so let's talk about this. ADM, as I mentioned, was introduced a long time ago. And training in this, um, in ADM, has drastically reduced the number of aircraft crashes. So we're going to use this to try to make good decisions. And a lot of what we're going to think about is how to, again, take kind of take steps, identify per your own personal attitudes, um, think about taking steps before you fly to minimize risk, develop a risk assessment um, plan or strategies, and be able to uh, minimize risk as much as possible and then respond to difficult situations as they arise. Um, and I need to define a, a term here, two terms, hazard and risk. Hazard is something that can potentially cause harm. So we have the picture of the shark here. A shark could be something which causes harm. Risk is different from hazard in the sense that risk requires hazard plus an exposure. So if there's no people around the shark, then there's no risk of, uh, you know, the shark biting a person or something like that. Uh, on the other hand, if there's a person swimming very close to the shark, then there's a risk there that maybe the shark will bite the person. So risk is something where you have a hazard, a potential hazard at least, and then there's an exposure. There's people around, there's, uh, in the case of UAV flights, maybe there's a drone, which is very expensive. Um, there's other property around your flying area, which it might be expensive. And so the hazard is a real or perceived condition, event, circumstance that's going to be threatening in some way. There's a potential for loss. And then risk is going to be the assigned value to the potential impact of a hazard. Okay, so we've got these two terms, hazard and risk. Keep in mind, hazard is the actual problem, the potential for a collision, the potential for a crash, something like that. The risk is the assigned cost or the assigned value of what would happen if that hazard actually occurred. So if we crash our drone, we'll have to buy a new one, and what's the value of that? What's the cost going to be associated with that? Okay, so there are a number of things which are going to make has which are which we're going to call hazardous which are really have nothing to do with your surroundings but have to do with your own self and five different attitudes which are important for us to know are going to be hazardous these are hazardous attitudes because they can lead to during flight uh, conditions which would lead to actual risk uh, a risk of something actually occurring anti-authority is just that don't tell me what to do D uh, these are people who do not like others telling them what to do. I can tell you this is one that I struggle with um, probably more than most of the other uh, hazardous attitudes. Um, I don't like it when people tell me what to do because I want to make the decision myself. And the antidote to this hazard is just follow the rules. They are usually right. So try not to allow yourself to get annoyed when other people try to tell you what to do or in particular, when the FAA is telling you what to do through the rules and regulations that they've put in place. They're usually right. Um, impulsivity is another hazardous attitude, and this is a do it quickly, immediately. This is people who feel the need to act quickly. And the antidote to this is just slow down, not so fast. 
think first, make sure you are prepared. Uh, you want to g grab your drone and run outside and fly. Take a step back, slow down for a moment, and think, what's the weather like? Are there, I need to check on my um, Before You Fly app to make sure there's no other aircraft in the vicinity. Things like that. Uh, invulnerability is a it won't happen to me kind of attitude. And this is just someone who believes that it won't happen to me. I, I'm not going to have an accident. I'm not going to crash. It's not going to happen to me. And the antidote is to realize that it could happen to me. Macho is an I can do it attitude. It, I can do it. I'm okay uh, trying to prove that you're better than anyone else or not affected by lack of sleep or alcohol or anything else. And the antidote to this one is that taking chances is foolish. It's foolish to take chances when you're flying a drone, especially because if you if something were to happen, um, there's a high cost associated with that. Drones are expensive. And resignation, what's the use? Uh, this is typically um, what happens when we're in a situation, which is bad, and we don't really see that we can make a difference by doing something. Um, and the antidote to this is that it's not hopeless. You can make a difference. Um, even if something is happening quickly and you're losing control of your drone, you can try to respond appropriately in the situation. Uh, so for example, if you lose control of your drone momentarily, try to keep taking control of your drone. Don't just give up and assume that it's hopeless. If your drone starts to fly off, you've lost radio connection and starts to go off somewhere else, try to follow your drone. There are always, almost always, things that you can do to make a difference, and that's the opposite of this resignation attitude. So five attitudes, all of which are a little bit different, all of which are hazardous. If any one of these, um, if you have any one of these attitudes, it could lead to an increased risk, an increased potential cost of something happening when you're flying. So how, how can we assess this risk? Well, we can do it in two ways. One way is to think about the cost of what might happen if the pilot were to crash or something were to happen, and then the likelihood that it would happen. So we can put this into a, a matrix like this. If something is negligible cost, even if it's uh, probable that it might happen, there's still probably not a very high risk. If the cost is very little, um, maybe I'm flying a $30 Walmart drone, which is very light, very small. It has a very negligible risk compared to flying a DJI Matrice 350, for example. The risk of my little $30 Walmart drone with prop guards that weighs less than you know just a few ounces, the risk of that falling and crashing and causing damage is much, much less than a very large enterprise drone uh, falling and crashing on something or somewhat, right? So the cost of failure is one category. The likelihood of occurrence is the other category. We put those two things together and we get a risk profile. And we can use this risk profile to decide to make go, no go decisions. So if you realize you're at high risk, you need to mitigate the risk. Um, and what is an acceptable level of risk? Uh, we may be okay with a medium risk under certain circumstances, whereas in other circumstances, we may demand to have a low risk. We have to ask the question, are we willing to accept a medium to high risk situation? If we're not willing to accept that medium risk, uh, then we should not fly. Um, so like I said, this is going to be dependent on the situation. It's going to be dependent on the people involved. Even if I am legally allowed to do something, doesn't mean that there is a low risk of cost, right? So the FAA sort of defines the laws to help us minimize risk, but that still could there still could be a risk of a significant cost, and so we have to account for that. All right, so there's def various ways for mitigating risk, and I'll just go through a few different ones. These will likely show up on the Part 107 exam, so you'll want to be uh, just kind of familiar with these uh, topics, and we'll go through several different ones. Um, there's a lot of acronyms. I apologize for all the acronyms. I didn't make them up, um, but they are helpful to think through, and the acronyms can help you remember. So first acronym, I am safe. I am safe. Illness, I, medication, M, stress, S, alcohol, A, fatigue, F, and emotion, E. So these are things that can help you think about, am I physically healthy? Am, am I under medication that's affecting judgment? If you can't drive or if you're not supposed to drive with that medication, you shouldn't fly. Um, are you under stress? Are you under psychological pressure, whether that's from uh, professional things or personal things? And again, the sort of question here is, what's the risk involved? And am I willing to take that risk? If I'm flying when I'm fatigued, am I willing to risk my very expensive drone uh, in order to be able to fly during that time, or should I wait until I'm more rested? 
And the process to walk through when you're trying to manage your risk is to first identify the hazards and then mitigate risk through appropriate actions. So we've identified a hazard. Um, and it could be anything. It could be in our personal attitudes, as I've already mentioned, or it could be things on site, towers, people, uh, mountains, um, other aircraft. These are all the things that the Before You Fly app, the mission plan that we've talked about, all those things are helping us to assess the hazards, the potential hazards. And then we need to assess the risks. What is the likelihood and cost of those risks? And we can use that matrix that I showed earlier. We need to analyze the controls. That means what can we do to control the risk? Can we fly on a different day? Can we use a different drone? Uh, can we go and make sure, how do we make sure there's no people underneath our drone when we're flying? Things like that. Maybe I've got a drone and I'm flying near a tower. There's a risk there of flying into the tower, losing control of the, of the drone temporarily and flying into the tower. That's not going to be good. That's going to cost me a new drone. How can I avoid that? One thing is I can leave a buffer around that tower. One thing is that I can try to pay for insurance for my drone, replacement insurance. Um, and then we make the control decision. So we have to decide, what am I going to do? I'm going to leave a buffer of 500 meters around this tower so that I have no uh, or as very little chance as possible of running into that tower. Something like that. And all of this may not take more than a moment. So maybe an aircraft is flying into your area. You're flying a drone and another aircraft enters the airspace where you are. You have to identify the hazard, assess the risk. There's a risk of crashing the drone into the airplane or vice versa. What do you need to do? Do you need to take the drone down? Do you need to take the drone up? Um, and then you make the decision. And then of course you execute the decision, monitor results and continue on in the process. And there's four fundamental principles to walking through this risk management workflow. Um, don't accept unnecessary risk. In other words, don't unnecessarily risk your drone, risk your safety, risk the safety of others when it's not necessary. If you can fly a little bit later in the day, fly a little bit later in the day if there's bad weather at the time that you're flying. Make risk decisions at the appropriate level. Not everyone is okay with the same level of risk, but at the very least, you need to think about what level of risk is acceptable to you. Is it okay if my drone crashes and I have to replace it? Um, and how can you balance that out with the cost of the benefits maybe it's maybe i really need to fly right now and what's the what's the cost if i have problems and weigh those in your mind and then integrate risk management into planning at all levels so this is the key thing think about potential hazards and potential risks and what you can do about them before you even fly before you go in the field while you're creating your mission plan for your flight and again this is uh, there's a difference here right between flying out, just going outside and flying your little drone for fun, just flying for fun, and doing a, an actual mission where you're either doing this for a job or maybe you're doing this for research, um, where you're doing a flight which is anything just, except just for fun, take it more seriously than a flight which is just for fun. So you run outside and you have a small drone, and if your drone crashes, it's not that big a deal. That is kind of the just for fun level. And then now we're talking about a more serious level where we're doing a mapping mission for research or we're doing a mapping mission for a client. We need to think about those potential risks and benefits when we're, talk when we're thinking about the mission plan, take those into account, you know, take into account what's gonna happen if we have bad weather. What's gonna happen if there's people on the site when we get there? How are we going to deal with these risks and how are we going to account for those appropriately?